Good morning, we're here at the Midlands Arts Centre in our beautiful main gallery and I'm absolutely delighted to be introducing our live painting demonstration today with artist Helen Tarr. We're also incredibly lucky because Helen is also one of our tutors and um, is able to do classes and courses with amateur painters or people that want to come in and enjoy the process of painting. So we're absolutely thrilled that Helen is going to work with us for about an hour and a half this morning uh, through the progress of a new painting. And she's going to be painting our city behind me, um, Sophie. And the inspiration for this particular demonstration today is the art that we have on our walls, our current exhibition, which is by Scottish painter Caroline Walker. And Caroline is a really interesting artist. She primarily um, focuses her attention on women, portraits of women, and particularly in our exhibition, Women at Work. Um, that's a beautiful exhibition looking at a whole range of different subjects, people who are manicurists or cleaners, often those women who paint behind the scenes. They do things, they have activities which are um, important to us but we don't always see. So that's really wonderful that we're inviting Helen to come and to, um, to depict her own interpretation of portraiture today. So I'm going to hand over to Helen. We've also got a, um, a Q&A and I think you're able to, if I'm right, um, text in or contact us with questions. So please do that and Helen will be able to pick those up throughout the hour and a half demonstration. So I'm going to hand over now and thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Deborah. Good morning, everybody. Um, I've got Sophie sat here. Um, in, she's in, absorbed in her embroidery work here. And in the few minutes that we've had preparing, I've been trying to visualize her figure on my blank canvas. Um, this is a traditional canvas on a stretcher that I've primed with pale umber acrylic paint. But I'm going to be painting oil paints today, so I want to show you some of the process that I use. Um, in preparation for starting, I've pre-mixed a lot of colours. Because oil paints stay wet, you've got this option of pre-mixing some of the colours that you're going to use in the painting. Um, and obviously they'll stay wet uh, long enough that I can work with them. With acrylics they would dry too quickly uh, and be unusable. But this is brilliant and it also saves a lot of time. I've only got an hour and a half and I'm going to try and do as much work as possible in that hour and a half. Um, I've left one colour to mix so that you can see my process and what I haven't got is the colour of the chair that Sophie's sat on. Uh, so it's a kind of turquoisey blue and I've got a very nice um, phthalo blue here which is a really strong pigment but it's, it's pretty close to that chair. What I can do is load up my palette knife and hold the colour up to the chair. I'm looking at it through one eye, squinting with the good eye, closing the other eye and just seeing how close that colour is to the, the chair itself. Obviously there's light and dark on that chair as well. I'm going to start with the dark version of the colour and I'm just looking behind Sophie's arm and I need to darken this. And because it's a bright blue, I'm going to darken it with some... Um, this is a colour I've forgotten the name of. <laughs> it's um, burnt umber, I think. It's a, yeah, it's burnt umber basically a dark brown and it knocks the brightness out of the blue and actually that's that's spot on I've got it first time sometimes it takes a few goes but that is really good so that's burnt umper with thallow blue there and I'm going to stack that up in a little heap and that's ready to use there and then wipe the brush I've got some a bit of kitchen roll and um, mix up a pale version. So I start with my clean thallow and I'm just taking from the clean blob of paint, just nicking a little bit off the side so I don't carry paint back to it, other colours back to it. And then next to there, I've got to lighten that. And I've got this fabulous colour, which is unbleached titanium here. It's a sort of buff, pale colour. And it's really nice for lightening colours because it's got this kind of subtlety and softness to it. But it doesn't have the the blueness of titanium white. 
So I'm just mixing that in with the back of the palette knife there. And I'm going to check that against the chair. And it's a bit bright. It needs a little bit more of the burnt umber. So that's just making it a warmer colour, a less cool blue. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, oh, that's really nice. That's really good. So that's a good match. So I can pile that up there, and that's ready to go. So those are my main colours mixed up, all ready to use. So I've just put that out of the way. And I'm going to take a large round brush. I think that's probably a number 10. It's an old brush, but that's OK. Um, and this, in my palette pots, I've got some Sansador low odor thinners. And I've also got a mixing medium made up of stand oil and Sansador. Two parts stand oil, one part Sansador. Um, the Sansador is what you would have used artistic, you know, artist terps for, but it's, it's low odor, it's much nicer to use. So just standing back, I'm going to look at Sophie again, and I'm looking at the shapes that are here. I'm trying to think of shapes, not things. It makes it much easier to draw. And I'm going to use, I've got a dark brownish blackish mix here, and I'm going to thin that right down with the Sansador. Uh, so it's very washy like this. And then I can just start to draw in her shape. And I'm trying to visualize how she's going to go on here. She's very tall, so I need to make sure the, the drawing is small enough to get everything in. Right. And it's, this is like, it's great to imagine it like clay. So you just add and take away as you need to. This is so runny, I can wipe it off very easily. And I'm just looking at the shapes around her. That painting in the background is making a dark backdrop. So I'm going to put a little bit more paint into my runny mix here. Because that's really important. Her face is a bit lighter than the painting in the background. And I can see it sort of passing through the top of her head up there. And then side of her face comes down there and I can see her shoulder. So I'm looking at the shape of the painting in that gap to help me draw the angle of her head there. And because it's an old brush, it's quite stiff and old, uh, I can just kind of scrub the paint on and it's very thin. And it will evaporate. The Sansador evaporates away very quickly. So if you just kind of rub it in really thinly, and that'll just show me what that needs to be like um, very easily. I think people are a bit daunted by oil paints, but they're very, very forgiving paints. Because if it does really go horribly wrong, you can wipe it all off. Or wipe off the bit that's gone horribly wrong. Uh, right. So I, that's nice. So her top, I don't want too much paint on here. Her top is coming out there around her neck. It's got a high collar on it. And I'm just blocking in her top. And looking at the arm. And then there's the wall, the bottom of the wall behind her coming through, and that also reappears over here. Which I think there may be a slight angle on that wall. If I hold my brush up level and close one eye again, I can see if that line is level to me or not. It's like a horizon line in the distance. And I think it is. So I need to move it up a bit and that one down a bit. And then I can also wash in where the floor is. It comes down beside her arm there. And that helps me to draw the edge of the chair as well. So all the time in my head, shapes, not things. So it's not a chair, it's a shape. And there's a shape around 
her arm there, there's a couple of interesting shapes where I see the floor. And if I paint the floor around her arm, it helps to give me the placing and the shape of her arm there. Uh, I'm not going to get her legs in, I think. We'll stop at her knees. That'll be fine. It'll be more of a kind of upper body painting. We'll see. See how much I can get him. What I like is the aspect of her head here because she's looking down at her work. Um, there's a nice sort of concentrated uh, feel to her expression. Absorbed. And then I'm looking at her lap around the embroidery hoop there. Just get this right. So her hand is like that, resting on the hoop. If I wasn't on a timer and wanted to get her whole figure in, I could wipe all of that out with a terpsy cloth and make her smaller and get the whole figure in. But I'm going to go with the flow this morning because um, I want to show you as much of the process as possible. Okay. And then her arm is tucked against her body there. There's a little bit there to lift out. You've got to get it right at this stage, really. Um, this is the moment when it's really easy to change things. You don't want to get a lot further down the line and then realise that something is badly out of place. So that's just a bit of um, Sansador on kitchen roll, just moving that out of the way. Okay, so her hand comes across here. I'm trying to keep the whole thing in mind as I look at this as well. Um, see how the whole body is working together. Okay, and the hand tucks under there, and then the skirt is sort of falling down here. So I'm starting with darks, you know, with oils and acrylics, generally you put the darks in first. With watercolours, you go from light to dark, and her body's sort of turning towards me here. And that chair arm is there. And I'm looking at those negative spaces, the spaces around the things to help me draw that chair. So there's just a little bit of the blue cushion there and her skirt, I can see her skirt there too. And her, her lap is foreshortened, so her knees are coming towards me and the length of the thigh is visually foreshortened. Uh, so I've got to bear that in mind as I draw these. It's very easy to think, oh, legs must be long, but actually I'm looking sort of straight up her lap there, so it is foreshortened. Um, and then there's the shadow there from her skirt. Okay. It's nice when you can sort of get enough in that you can sort of see how the painting's going to go. Um, I'm just going to step back and have a look. And I'm just looking at the composition, how it's set out. I think that's going to be okay. I think her head might need to be bigger. So 
we'll adjust that now because her chin is here. Actually, that makes her head look bigger anyway. Just getting her chin in the right place. Uh, and then the collar goes around there. And just hinting at things on the face there, but that needs a lot more delicacy. So again, this is still really, really runny paint. Okay. So I'm going to block in the floor around her next. Uh, this is a flat brush. Um, I think it's a number eight. And what I want to do is mark out where all the floor is now, because that would help to draw the, the outside of her body. Um, and I've got colour mixed up here for the floor. Um, it's this warm wood colour. <coughs> uh, so, with the flat brush, you can sort of lay the paint on quite quickly. It's interesting, the tone of her arm is very similar to the tone of the wood behind there. So it's going to be sort of quite a subtle thing to paint. And it goes in there too. And what I can do, as I kind of see things, I can correct, make corrections as I go too. So uh, it comes down there. And soften that line. Because the arm is sort of blending into the background a little bit there, and I think I want to keep that as a very soft line. I'm using a little bit of the medium now to make this flow. So I want to paint quickly at this stage and just get things blocked in so I can see what needs to go where. With acrylics, you can block in and work straight over the top. It's a nice way to get started with a painting does give you the shapes very quickly. And over here it's lighter. I've got a light version of my floor colour there. So behind her there, the floor is a bit lighter. And I'm just looking at the relationship of the back of the chair to her arm being tucked in there. Bit of light there too. You can always change this after. It's getting something down that you can work with, I think, is the important thing. Make a start, and then you've got something to go with, something to put your colours with, you know, to be able to see the tones in the subject. Uh, and don't be afraid. So that's really nice. There's, it's nice, the space under the chair. It's slightly shaded under there. Which helps to sort of place it on the floor. Obviously, given that I haven't got a great deal of time, this background may well remain fairly simple so that I get the work on the figure done and then that comes round there so I can sort of redraw and move things around if I need to right is anybody here not yet um, so Next, I'm going to sort out, there's a bit of an issue here that I'm not happy with, so I'm going to get that right. So her sleeve is there. I black in, put in the, um, the dark of her dress. That should help, her top.
and slope there of her shoulder. There's a little bit of shadow in this top. We've got a light set up to the left here that's casting some light and shade onto her top, which helps to give form, describe the form. Such a good challenge doing a figure. Nothing quite like it. Um, I studied a lot of life classes here. Well, I came to life sessions here uh, when my children were young with Paul Bartlett and used to come every Friday night with oil paints and canvas and load it all up in the car. <laughs> and it was wonderful and such good practice. I think if you can do this, you can probably paint anything, really. <laughs> uh, so gradually, as I keep revisiting bits, you know, going round and round, keeping my attention all over the painting, uh, it sort of gradually pulls it all together as we go. I'm kind of fixing things, checking things as I go. Um, I'm going to put in the white wall behind it because I think I need that brightness to show the uh, dark tones up better now. I'm just going to moisten the brush a little bit with some um, Sansador. I'm going to use a warm white. Um, just try that first and then see how it looks. There are some sort of bluish shadows under the painting but I'll yeah I've got warm white with a little bit of the kind of floor color running down into it which I quite like it's kind of warming it a little bit if I put that there the the color of the canvas this pale umber starts to take on a kind of more of a presence here in relation to that so it starts to suggest the tone of her skin and around here too. I'm just checking the drawing of her figure and that also was a bit high there. So just finding the shapes in here all the time. Just brush that in, have a look. That's getting better. Uh, so I'm going to put in the painting. I like setting the scene. Uh, I've got some red. I like to get the, the big things done first and gradually kind of work down. I'm going to warm the colours, deepen them a little bit in the painting because it will jump straight out if I don't do that. There's a very strong red in there. So I've got cadmium red here and some of my brown mix here that I made up for her shoes, I think. But I can use that in the painting too, in the backdrop. And I'm only going to suggest it because it's just part of the scenery here at the moment. It's a very striking painting, it's very stripy. So I'm just going to play all that down. Hopefully it will sit back as I go. And I can just check how I've drawn her head there as I do this. That's it. 
put more of the detail of the clothes in. So this black is um, burnt umber with French ultramarine mixed together. And it makes a, a nice black. It's not uh, charcoal -y. It's kind of warm. Obviously, it could be grayer. If you put more blue in it, it becomes grayer. I just want to get that shape there, because that just circles around her neck, that collar in a nice way. And that tucks behind her arm there. So I'm using a big brush because I don't want to get too fiddly at this point. I want to just get the structure of the painting right and have it all very mobile at the moment. So I'm going to take, this is, I've got this very dark brown mix and a kind of reddish brown that I'm going to use for her hair. I can add highlights and textures and details later on. And looking at the shapes around her head, the sort of outline. And just wondering if I can use that colour anywhere else. I can put some detail on the chair. And give that some shape. And I will stand back in a moment and just check what I've got here. quite good to stand back while you're working actually to keep the brush at arm's length. Okay. And there's a light version of that wood colour which I can mix in with my background colour. It's all catching the light there. Okay, oops, a bit of a dark in there. That helps to show the um, shadow from her leg against the chair. Okay, step back and have a look. Yeah, okay. It's happening. <laughs> it's a relief, isn't it? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to put some skin tones in next. I want to start getting the warmth um, and shadows in her skin there. And I've pre-mixed a few colours. Um, I've got a nice... This is um, burnt sienna mixed with warm white and a little bit of the cobalt blue, and it makes a kind of cool, but um, shadowy kind of version of a skin tone here. Uh, so that, again, comes down the inside of the arm. Everything is speculative when you, well, when I paint it is. I just try things and see if they work. If they don't work, I'll do it a different way. Um, it's best if you don't get too hung up when you're painting, just kind of do it and see what you get and then work with that. Um, we all set out with an idea of what we want the painting to look like. And sometimes, you know, we achieve that idea and it can be great. Sometimes we achieve it and it's not so great. Uh, and other times we get something quite surprising that we didn't expect. 
that can be really good. And other times it goes horribly wrong. But <laughs> uh, so, you know, keep an open mind about your paintings. Um, be prepared for surprises. Be prepared to change tack as you go. Um, and enjoy it. That's the big thing. And that will come through in the work. If you have fun while you're doing it, rather than agonizing, the work will look better for it. So I'm just finding the shape of her limbs here. Um, there's little bits of shadow uh, there, sort of carving out the form of her limbs. So it's just helping. It, the figure can look very, well, it looks wider until you put the shadow in. So sometimes you might think that it looks wrong, but it's usually that the form needs a little bit of shadow adding, and then that makes them look more rounded and uh, less big. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of, I've got a pale color. This is um, burnt sienna with the warm white mixed in it and a touch of blue. Um, burnt sienna and warm white are brilliant starting points for a pale skin. Uh, it just seems a nice sort of soft color. Uh, so if I put that in, that can, because that leg is sort of raised up slightly higher than the other one, so it looks slightly bigger, but it's also squashed up against the seat, the edge of the seat there. So that's just bringing some warmth as well because it's slightly pinker. It's bringing warmer skin tones now. And I can kind of, I'm scrubbing with this brush. You can see I'm holding the brush from the top and it's um, a sort of rubbing motion I'm using. I'm not using the tip of the brush and drawing at this point. That might come later. But I hold it on its side and use the side of the brush and just scrub in the colour and sort of spread it thin as I paint. This is how I paint. Uh, obviously everyone's got different methods, but what I like is it keeps the, the marks fresh uh, and thin and I can work back into them without it all turning into mud. If I laid on very thick paint at this stage, I wouldn't be able to rework it very well um, because you know, subsequent colours would look, would become muddy mixed into it. But with this, I put the paint on thinly and um, scrub it on and then develop it as I go. But I, you know, there's scope then for laying more paint on too. That's something that's, you know, uh, something you develop over time really, that kind of, those technical things um, or techniques find what suits. Sophie's got a tattoo, a big tattoo on this arm. I'm <laughs> it's already suggesting it where I've got that little bit of underpainting coming through, but I need to bear that tone in mind as a slight change of tone where it is. Um, okay, and I'll put some of this on her face too. There's some highlights here from the spotlight. I'm just looking at her features now compared to the other elements here. So the relationship of her nose, because her head is down, the tip of her nose is lower than the top of her ears when the head is straight up. They're quite level. So those relationships change when the head is angled down or at an angle. So uh, yeah, so the tip of the nose would be level with the bottom of the ear and the eyebrows level with the top of the ear. So you kind of have an angle going up like that. I hope that makes sense. 
um, and I'm just dabbing in where the light bits are, not worrying about a likeness. I'm hoping a likeness will come out of the general painting um, because that can become a bit of an obsession. Um. So that's that bit. Just checking. I think her knees need to be bigger. This looks a bit small here, so I'll build those. Looking at that space, there's a bit of chair and her skirt. And just need to add a bit more here. And that brings them a little bit closer to us then as well. I'll put a bit of the warm white into that pink too because there's a bit of highlight on her knee, knees there. So we're 35 minutes in. So I should be about a third of the way through, in theory. Not sure if that's the case. <laughs> Obviously, you can spend weeks painting a painting like this. You know, I'm doing a very quick version. Um, but hopefully, there'll be something there for you to see where it's going by the time I finish. OK. I'm going to work on the chair next to make sure I've got that right. Um, I'm going to use another big round brush. This is a number six. These are really old brushes. They're um, sterling, pro art sterling brushes, and I've had them a very long time. And um, I kind of like them because they're so blunt on the end. I may have worn them that way over time. Um, but they're really good for kind of blocking in and scrubbing in. So I'm just using, I need a bit more burnt sienna in here. I want a sort of reddish brown. And just darken those edges a bit. Just gives it a bit of form. Because it's sort of circling here. It's such an important part of the uh, composition because it's going around her back here. need a light colour. Um, I'm going to put the blue in and using a bit of the medium just to make it spread a bit. So I'll start with the dark of the blue chair. It is around here. So her, just checking this arm. Um, so that is there. There's very little background colour actually there. So I can cover that up with this blue. And I'm going to use that. I'm just squinting at this to look at the tones of the chair. Uh, and the, the seat of the chair is also in the darker color. So I'm using a long flat brush for this. That you can just sort of slab colour on with these. This is a Rosemary & Co brush, I think, yeah. They're nice brushes, Rosemary & Co. Very, really good if you want to do fine work. Um, and I'm going to put some of the lighter colour in on top of this, just to kind of suggest a little bit of form in there, because it's a soft cushion. Um, just soften the colour a little bit. And I'm going to put some of that up at the top here. So this is coming out there. And there's actually shadow behind her arm. So I can pick up and use these colours as I want. Um, just the two colours on this one brush. I try and keep a brush for each colour as much as possible. So I will use a lot of brushes doing this. But if you rinse out oil painting brushes in the process of painting, you can end up, because I use um, white spirit to rinse 
the brushes, it cleans them really well, but I don't want to get white spirit on my painting. So I tend not to clean them during the painting. I just wipe them off or I'll dip them in Sansador, that can um, give them a quick clean. There's a bit of this around here too. Uh, if I need to, if there's, I haven't got many of the very small brushes. So um, sometimes I need to clean a smaller brush. I'll just put that little corner in there, in the lighter blue. Okay. Um. Just fatten that bit up there a bit. Now I'll step back and have a look. Yes, okay, I need to get the hoop in, um, which is a colour I haven't mixed, so I'm going to mix a green for that. Um, just wondering what brush to use. This, this is a round brush, another Rosemary Co brush. I think what I'll try and do is use some of the colours I've already mixed, so there's a kind of um, continuity through the painting, so I'm going to use the dark green of the chair. And that's like a khaki green that she's got on the hoop. Uh, so I'll just put a bit of blue in it just to make it slightly greyer and um, some of that unbleached titanium here. Uh, I'll try. So if you get the colour right, this is a nice trick actually and it does really help a lot because colour is so complicated. If you get the colour right in your mix and you hold the brush up in front of the subject, the tip of the brush where the paint is should kind of disappear against the subject. It really is, you know, it's possible to get them that close. I'm just adding blue and yellow to this. It's slightly greyer than that, so I'm going to put some French ultramarine in and a little bit of the burnt umber just to make it a sort of browner, greeny grey. And that's that's doing it, that's kind of disappearing as I hold that against the green, so that should be pretty close. And I think if your colours are accurate, you don't have to worry so much about the drawing because the colour will sit in the right place in the painting without too much effort. Because it's the right colour and tone, it'll sort of just sit where it needs to be, it won't jump out or it won't recede too far. Which is why I like pre-mixing with oils. Otherwise, you end up experimenting on the painting um, to try and get the right colour, and that's when they become overworked or muddy. And also, that green is draping down here too. I'm just kind of sweeping that on to get a sense of the fall there. And there's a bright pink rim on the... There's some colours in the embroidery too, which I just kind of hint at, but sort of merge them in with what's there. Okay, um, I'll wipe that brush off. I think I just need to bring that down a little bit around her fingers. There. So I've just wiped the brush, I haven't washed it. Make it slightly bigger. Okay, and then um, I'll make a pink for the rim on there. Um, I've got a lizarin crimson here, um, which I can I'll mix it into the back wall colour with titanium white, and that should give me a cool kind of pink. put a touch of cadmium red and cadmium red is incredibly strong um, as a pigment if you put it in anything it really does dominate so was ever you know just use a tiny amount of it I'm gonna do that with the alizarin um, mostly and this brush is it's an a Jackson's 
a koya, I think. Um, but it's got a really neat end on it. It's a very nice brush. So I can just draw that band in. And I can lighten that colour too to give a kind of highlight version of it. It's more titanium white. At the back of the band there, it's light. The hoop. And down here too. Right. Oh, it's gone off. Don't know the password to that. <laughs> Um, just wondering if there were any messages. Right. Uh, so, assess it now, have a think. Um, so I'm going to work on... I want to get that arm sorted out well. It doesn't look quite comfortable there. This one's looking better. And I need to get her hand and wrist working well there. She's got warmer skin tones than I've given her at the moment, so I want to introduce some more warm colours. Um, and then we'll carry on and see what we can get done. Uh, so, if I use my background colour again, I can bring that in there. Sort of sort that out a little bit. And there's a glimpse of light floor through there. And there. So as I put more background in, I can kind of tidy the edges as I go. Not too much. I don't want it to be too tight, but I can kind of redefine things a little bit, improve things. I'm going to lighten that a little bit more. It's very warm, that floor colour, and I want it not to come forwards quite so much. So just lighten it a little bit. And by lightening the background, that kind of brings more warmth and depth to the, the positive objects here, the subjects. Um, and just work that in. I quite like this when colours kind of spread a little bit. It kind of helps tie the painting together. And a slightly pinker version of the floor is over here. I wonder if the light's changing actually. It looks as though the sun is moving round. And maybe making the floor a little bit lighter here. We've got windows up there where the sun might come in later, I think. And I'm just correcting as I go. This palette I'm using isn't very big. It's nice and light, but it's quite small. But it's um, the same as I used for the acrylic, well, the same type, I should say, not the same, uh, same palette, but it's the same type, and it's a folder, like a plastic folder, so it has a lid with it. So I can mix on the lid if I want to. But it just means when I finished painting this, and have to drive home. Um, I can put the lid on the box and any paint that's left is protected. And obviously my car is as well. Um, and I can use the paint again over the next few days. It will stay wet for a good few days. So I don't have to throw it all away at the end of the session. With acrylic paints, once they're dry on the palette, that's it. You know, that they're, they're unusable then. But with oils, you can use them over days. And lots of artists just heap it all up and just scrape the top off and, and use it uh, over and over again, or just keep adding to the pile, which is more like the palette I've got at home. 
but this is brilliant for being out and about, you know, if you're painting in the landscape or, um, you know, demonstrating whatever. Uh, it works really well. Okay, I like the background. I, that's kind of doing something nice, I think. Right. Um, okay. So I need to beef up the chair a little bit. I think it's looking a bit spindly. And I'm just working out which brush to use. Um, I've got another round brush. I think I'll go with that. And some of the medium. So the chair legs, I've got too thin. So it's all looking too spindly. So I'm going to just build that up now. You'll notice I'm trying not to be obsessed with the figure. That's the, <laughs> the temptation is just to completely zoom in uh, on Sophie as the subject. And it would mean that I might overlook other important parts of this composition. And I don't want to get too drawn into a portrait. I want it to be a figure painting of a person in a room. Um, so I'm trying to keep my attention spread around the painting. It's not always easy because our, our instinct is to go for the, the star of the show, really. Um, but there's plenty of time for that. And she does need to have a context that makes sense. She needs a chair that looks like she's sat on it and um, that actually functions as a chair. I'm going to put some titanium white into the burnt umber here to lighten the top of this arm. Oh, it's a bit cold. So I'm going to put burnt sienna in there to warm it up. Just a bit too grey. That's better. Because that arm is bigger than I've got it. Do leave me a comment if you're watching. I'd like to know if you're out there watching and enjoying it, or if you've got any questions. Um, do ask me. I know a lot of people are curious about oil paints that, um, but feel you know nervous about using them. Um, but you know, I would advise. Oh, I would suggest you have a go because um, you can get such lovely effects with them. And they are forgiving, you know. OK, I'm going to build up her arm a bit there, because I think that needs uh, shaping here. Um, So I'm getting my dark sort of flesh tone there. Um, but I'm going to just touch in down this side. There's a nice curve where her forearm meets the wrist that's resting on the hoop. Uh, and I want to get that in. And make sure our hands are big enough. Hands are often uh, mistakenly done a bit small, bigger than we think. Even if the hand is closed like this, we need to sort of suggest its size. Right, and then over here is dark. I need to just warm this a little bit, so I'm going to put some more burnt sienna in there because her, the mid-tone on her arms is warmer. So that's a, a bit of both there. I've got the light pinky colour and then the deeper shadowy colour, but then mixed with... Um, that's better. 
the burnt sienna. Put some more light down there. Just picking up some of the dark next to the arm there, because her arm is quite close to her body on this right-hand side. So I'm trying to sort of get a sense of that being tucked in against her body. Um, and get some of that nice warm colour. And try a little bit of cadmium yellow in there too. Mm, it's too yellow. Um, try some alizarin. That's nice. That's just a little bit of pinkishness here. Give her a glow. And on that forearm and then going up onto the upper arm. And I'll use the same on this arm too. It's a nice warm glow in the mid-tones. and down on the legs as well. So I've got dark mid and light tones on her skin tones. There are actually many, many colours here. I can see um, with her skin tones here. And, but I haven't, I think if I had more time, I'd see if I could suggest them. I'll see how I go, but there's all kinds of pinks and mauves and other things going on there. Um, so that's just bringing out the three-dimensional shape of her legs and arms here. Um, and some of that warm, a bit more of the warm tone. So that's burnt sienna, alizarin, and warm white. And I can actually hold it up and squint, that's pretty good. Squint as I, um, just to check it. And a bit of the medium just to make it spread a little bit more. How are we doing? Um, would you like to have a little rest for a minute? That's, we're an hour in, sorry. Um, and I'll talk to you about some of the things that I'm using here uh, while Sophie has a stretch. Um, so with oil painting, there's um, a technique that we use um, that you may have heard of. It's called using painting fat, for lean to fat. So you, you start an oil painting like I did with very thin lean paint, there's no oil in it, and you thin it down with Sansador or with artist herbs. Um, and it, it means that the, paint, the underpainting will dry more quickly because the, uh, the terps evaporates very quickly and the Sansador does, and you can overpaint more quickly then. Um, but it also you know, makes a good uh, base then for adding further colours to. Then as you come up through the painting layers, and as you can see I covered the whole canvas um, quite early on, and then I'm sort of introducing more and more layers of uh, paint as I refine it. Um, and as you come up through those layers you use uh, less of the Sansador and more of either pure paint or paint with a medium added to it. And that medium, there's all sorts of different oils out there that do different things. Linseed oil uh, takes a long time to dry and it can yellow a little bit. But stand oil, this is stand oil, uh, which I think is a kind of purified linseed oil. It's very thick and gloopy. Um, if you mix two thirds stand oil to one third thinners, and I've used Sansador, um, that makes a nice painting medium and it retains the oil in the paint. That's my, my mix there. Um, so that's two parts stand oil, one part thinners. And uh, it means that it keeps the integrity of the paint going. So the, the binder in the paint is um, linseed oil. 
Um, so you're keeping that binder uh, in place as you work. And that way you'll get more gloss in your paint as you finish the painting, so you get a nicer quality of colour in it. Um, and also, you know, it protects the painting as well. It becomes a very hard and you know, durable surface. Um, and you'll discover, <laughs> maybe by accident like I did, that if you try and paint on oily paint, you know, go back onto it, um, the paint will kind of bubble off. It doesn't want to stick to it. So, you know, once you get to those very oily layers, you need to know that that's going to be the last layer that you do on your painting. Thank you, Sophie. Um, so I'm going to step back and just have another assessment of this. It's good to pause, good to have a look. It's getting there. OK. Um, so I want to make sure the relationship of her head and her body uh, is right. Um, that looks very good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, that's great. Yeah, you could move your right arm outwards a little bit, please. The other, the, the other one, please, thank you. Just a little bit. Yeah, lovely, thank you, that's great. Um, so, yeah, it's this area up here. I want to make sure I've got that relationship right between the shoulders and the neck and the head. So I'm going to look at her, I think her throat, I haven't developed that very much, so I'm going to use some of these deeper tones, skin tones that I mixed. And just have a look here. And make sure I've got that right. So the the neck of her top is sort of circling and, um, and there's a shadow. I'm going to just take some of the paint off this brush. There's a shadow here. And then the skin tones get a little bit warmer as they come out of the And deeper colours. I'm going to use just rich, make a richer um, skin tone, darker and richer. So this is burnt sienna, burnt amber, a little bit of cobalt blue, and I'm just going to warm it with some alizarin just to kind of make it a little bit more purpley. Not too dark though. So I'm going to put some mixing white in there. Just hoping I can get somewhere near. It's pretty good. So her, there's a warmth in her ear colours there, which is really nice. Um, and I'm just wondering whether I can put, put some of that on her cheek over here. I'll just lighten it a little bit. So I'm putting some warm white in there to lighten that, but it's basically the same sort of colour. A bit dark. I'm still using a big brush because I don't want, wherever I put my focus, if I go into very small marks here on her face, uh, it will instantly become the focal point of the painting. You know, wherever you put your time as a painter is where the viewer looks first, which is another reason not to labour mistakes because you can guarantee it will stand out like a sore thumb, particularly with watercolour painting. That's a big no-no is to labour a watercolour mistake. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping I can keep my attention around this painting a little bit. I know her face is going to be the focal point in a way, but I also want it to be about her posture and her activity and um, her expression, her physical expression too. If you do have questions, 
you can leave questions on the um, video when it's on YouTube in the comments and I'll have a look and see if I can answer them if you're watching this after the live event um, I will try and answer the questions that come up okay um, so that's a bit dark there I'm going to lighten that a little bit and just warm it a little bit to it's such a treat to have a model to work from <laughs> really nice not easy everyone's so busy aren't they to get people to sit but this is lovely so i'm going to do her hair next I no i think i'm going to work on her clothes again i want to get this the blackness of this black in because it's going to affect the tones of her skin around here so I want to make sure I've got that right. Um, I'm just going to touch in that bit first. Because I want to open up that space there. And then um, this is a filbert, long filbert brush. So it's a, on a flat ferrule. The brush head is flat. Um, but it's got a curved end. And it's a nice, neat brush. It's another Rosemary Co. brush. And um, I think it would be nice for just spreading on, because you get such a smooth mark with these. The darkness of her clothes here, so I'm using more of the Burnt Umber and French Ultramarine Blue. They're the darkest colors I've got on the palette virtually. And I um, just want to develop her clothes a little bit more. got a belt in there actually so I'll try and suggest that so all the tones in the subject are affected by the other things around them um, so the darkness of this skirt and top make her skin tones appear relatively paler. Um, than they might if she was wearing white. That's nice, that sort of shapes her leg, the way the fabric drapes round is really lovely for describing the shape of the curve on the top of her leg. And then that goes straight across there and there's a shadow in there. And that's working. And because it's a really soft fabric, that skirt, so it's absorbing a lot of light. Um, if it was leather or um, velvet, there'd be a lot more shine on it, but it's a really, there is a little bit of highlight actually around her leg there I can put in, but it's, it's a soft fabric, so it's just absorbing light more than anything. It's quite a solid, dark shape. makes me think of um, Manet's paintings of women in, you know, he often painted women in black. It was quite radical at the time. Um, beautiful paintings. So 
So there's the cap sleeve here just coming over. I'm going to leave the edges slightly lively. I don't want to tighten that up too much. It, it adds movement to the painting. Um, so I quite like the edge there. As long as the, the clothes are doing the right thing, generally. I'm not going to worry too much. I need to make a lot more of this. Right. Um, I'm going to put some of the mixing painting medium in with this so it flows. And there is a little bit more light on this top, so I might be able to put some of those highlights in in a bit. Um, start down here. layering it up and some of the underpainting shows through so it adds interest and richness to the colors rather than just kind of blocking in a solid black mass um, I've got to watch the time slightly haven't I we've got three quarters of an hour left no is that right no half eleven we're stopping aren't we quarter of an hour left that's quite a difference isn't it okay so I'm putting some gray on here no pressure. <laughs> uh, okay. And this is just picking up where the light is falling on her t-shirt, her top. So I'm just mixing this mixing white into the burnt umber and French ultramarine mix which is giving me a lovely soft grey on her top there where the light's falling and there are creases sort of going across it. Some light over here as well. I've always got a bit of a debate with myself about whether I should carry on and develop a painting that I've done like this. Um, when I get home. But I kind of like the freshness of this and that it is a very instinctive, you know, instant response to the subject. So I'm just putting some darks and lights in there around that belt. Um, I think maybe the thing would be to do an, another painting altogether, perhaps based on this. I have this as a kind of first go. Hands are interesting things. They're just so complex, incredibly complex things. Well, hands and feet, really, uh, together. I'll put some highlights on her skin because we are getting near the end. So I'm using my light skin tone and I'm using this warm white. The warm white is a lovely the reason they call it a warm white is because titanium white is often uh, often has a, a blueness to it. It does have a blueness to it. It's a very solid white. But when you mix it with other colours, it tends to turn them slightly cooler, whereas a warm white will just raise, you know, lift the tone of the colour, um, but not change it too radically as it does it. So there's some light here on her forehead. Um, and the bridge of her nose around her eye it's a little bit too white I'm using some of this yellow from the background colour too just to keep it 
not too white and stark. Soften that up a little bit. And I'll develop her hair too in a moment. Um, and some of that light down here too on her arm. Make sure I get this hand right as well. There's a bit of dark in there. Which helps to define her thumb. And some warm. I've got a rag here, by the way, that's what I'm wiping this on. I end up with a very colourful rag by the end of it all, but it does mean it's one less thing to hold if it's tucked in the apron like this. So I'm just putting in deeper, warmer skin tones to just define her arm here and I'm going to do her tattoo with a smaller brush. Um, oh, I'll show you this. This is a trick. If you've got old brushes that are splaying, when you wash them, wash them out with washing up liquid and wrap them up in kitchen roll tightly while they're wet and it helps to hold their shape uh, as they dry. Um, you can save many an old brush doing that. Okay, I'm going to put more of the blue into my kind of dark grey here. Uh, there's a blueness to this. And just, I'm just going to scuff it in really lightly because I'm not going to get too concerned with, like the painting up here as well, you know, it's just a suggestion of what's there. You know, if you overdid it on the detail of the tattoo, I think it would just jump out as a another thing, another subject almost. Um, there's a bit of red as well on the outside of her arm there. Really is hints and suggestions, I think that's almost it. I'll use a finer, a finer brush for that one. Uh, here we are. This is a great brush. I think that's a long flat brush. Um, which is really good for detail. So I'm going to pick up more of that grey and just add a little bit more to this. And just You can blend it in with your finger a bit. Oops. I think that would do for that. Um, hair. So I'm getting a smaller round brush and some of the medium and I've got hair colour mixed up still. And just need to add more of it, make it a bit richer. And there's highlights that look kind of warm. Um, I pick up a little bit of this kind of warm brown there. And some of the medium, because the paint feels a bit dry. Uh, I think this is burnt sienna, and I'm going to put some cadmium yellow in there, because there's sort of gold, goldy kind of colour in there too. And using it quite dry just to suggest the, the fine hairs, the wisps here. And 
some light. I need, um, I think it's kind of cool, cool kind of light on the top. So I'm using some of that gray that I've used elsewhere. Uh, because there's such a lot of white light in this room. It's the shine on her hair is reflecting that. Okay, her hands need a bit of refining. Um, perhaps I'll use the same brush. Okay, five minutes. So this is just fine tuning, just having another look, looking more closely at the details, um, looking for lights and darks where they need to be. Slightly pink in the details of her hands. Um, Putting this in as a mid-tone here as well, just to soften that curve on her arm and up here too. Um, let's warm it this side too a little bit. So I'm not rubbing the paint into the paint that's on there, I'm patting the brush on. Uh, just tapping it gently because I want the paint to remain distinct, not sort of rub together. And I can put the floor back in around her too. There to just define that arm a little bit more. And the chair. So I've got the brushes there kind of ready to use all the time with the colours on. And put more light on her hand. There's actually a little bit of shadow too on the board, on the, um, the fabric on the hoop. what I need to do next. Uh, just check I've got maybe a bit more chair. Um, oops, like that. some light on the end of the chair to just give it a bit of glow. So I'm just using all the colours here now uh, to make a light grey for a bit of highlight on there.
Well, it's going to be fairly rough because of the limit of time, but I hope it's given you an idea of how you can use oil paints um, and how quick they are, I guess. to just I think with a flat brush I'm just going to go over the background painting a bit as well I want that to be a bit darker so this is thinned down with medium just to kind of frame her a bit more, really. touch of light on her belt buckle for a bit of sparkle soften that a little bit I think that's about right um, with more time, I can see that's a bit rough there, but with a bit more time, I would add more to her face, more detail. But not too much. I like that it's not too much of a, a distraction. Right, I think that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for watching. Okay.